Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we've got the opportunity to try and figure out what's going on with this Pen Battle 3 4000. It is sticking. You can see it's, a, it's quite an effort while well, it's not even going there. Something is very unusual about this reel. And we're not sure if we're going to be able to solve this one during this video. This may wind up being a uh, problem diagnosis one or uh, maybe we'll get lucky and we'll figure it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is start by taking off the exterior pieces and parts. I want to eliminate potential causes for that stickiness. And if you can take things away, like this spool, we'll find out if it's the spool bottoming out or not, among other things. So let's see if we can't take that off. The Battle 3, little, uh, it's the latest iteration of it. It comes with sealed bearings. I think that's the biggest change between the ba Battle 2 and the Battle 3. They've kind of up-leveled the things. What, what used to be the Battle 2 is kind of becoming the, the Fierce 3. And um, we'll, uh, we're going to take a look here. I've removed the spool. Let's see if we still have the same... St well, look at that. It's something in the spool. Isn't that unusual? That, that reel turns nice and free and easy. So we have to go figure out why is it that the spool is behaving this way. Wow. So it may be that the spool is bottoming out. I'm not sure on that one. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to stop the video. We're going to go get a um, schematic for the reel. And we're going to do a comparison because it, when I put the spool on and I lock down the spool, we have that issue. So that's one of the reasons why when you do problem diagnosis, you want to start by eliminating issues rather than finding issues. So let's lock this down again and see if that's a problem again. Well, <laughs> I don't know if we had a trap line or what we got now. Well, we're going to take the whole reel apart. Let's start there then. Let's assume that this spool is okay, that there's something weird that was going on and now it's not going on anymore. So we'll take this off. We'll look down inside the case. There may be a broken piece or something. It was out of place. I don't know. This is kind of an oddball one, and from time to time you see the oddball stuff. And while I'm doing this, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you um, like the art of reel repair, if you like it as a hobby, if you enjoy learning about fishing reels, if you uh, just are curious about how fishing reels are made, how they come, to, come together, how they come apart, how they're serviced, and so on and some of the, uh, the history of the companies in that. So, obviously no issue here whatsoever. One of the things you don't have, and this is an anti-reverse override, that always bothers me, but uh, it doesn't bother everybody. I guess the manufacturers have thought that folks don't uh, hand fight fish any longer. They leave it to their drag systems and they don't need the anti-reverse override and they just go with that anti-reverse clutch. I'm gonna take the bump guard off and now I'm going to take the handle off. The handle comes off in a clockwise manner opposite the way that the reel turns. I'm not sure if somebody's had this reel apart. This looks like it has the, um, um, the quantum grease in it, not the, uh, not the pen grease. So it's likely or it's possible that this reel has been serviced and maybe something has gone, am gone amiss with the servicing. You never know. When something comes in the shop, you don't know a whole story. Sometimes you get little bits and pieces of it. Sometimes they'll say, well, I was out and the, the reel started acting up, but they don't tell you that they snagged something or they dropped it in the water or whatever. You kind of get a half of the story, and well, that always makes it interesting to try and figure out what's going on in the reel itself. Well, to get that axle shaft out of here, and that's, that's a potential, a bent axle shaft, uh, to get the axle shaft out, we have to go and open up the case. 
With this reel, the case ends below the rotor, so you can take these four screws out and you can get inside there. And this is the 4000 side. The 4000 size is a very efficient size. It's kind of a, a well, it's kind of a jack of all trades or in baseball terms a utility player. You can use this uh, fresh water, you can use lakes, piers, off boats, you can use it in the surf. The braid capacity now with, with braid has enabled this reel to, uh, to do a lot more. Well, this is kind of always a curiosity to me. So we had mentioned that we saw the hot sauce or whatever this might be on the bearings. Well, it looks like it was opened up and put there. But inside here, that's old grease. That, so nobody's been inside this case to uh, make that uh, do any more or any less. And we're going to remove this. I notice that we have a pile of old grease just right here, among other things. It may just be that the inside of this case is dirty. We broke it free somehow by removing the spool. I don't know. But we're going to find out. We're going to take that screw out from the piece. And you can see the blue grease in here, and that would make sense because that's Penn's precision reel grease is blue, not uh, not the red grease that's in here, which is, as I mentioned, is probably quantum hot sauce or something like that. Take that screw out, hold the cross wind block, and pull up on the axle shaft. Did it come out easy? It came out very easy. So I'm going to eliminate a, ba a bent axle shaft as the cause of the issue. You can see that just rides in and out. There's no friction there at all. So that's not causing any kind of a, a back play in the reel. Next up then we're going to remove the main gear. You can see we've got some old grease on there, but old grease isn't going to kill anything. I mean it'll de degrade the performance, but it's not the, the cause of the tripping. Now it could be the cause if it was uh, coagulated on a particular piece or not, but not in this case. That uh, bearing, as I mentioned, I think the sealed bearings is one change in the, uh, the battle, and uh, we'll take care of that. We're going to pull the cross wind block. That's held in by a screw. And when I take these off, you're going to notice two things. I wear a protective glove on my hand. That's there to kind of keep the greases and chemicals and wipe off. And out of the picture, I'm putting all of those pieces into a parch tray. That parch tray is holding my um, everything I take off so that when it's time to put it back together again, I know where to look for it. I'm going to pull that uh, cross wind gear off, wipe down the back of that. It's a good time to check it. Make sure all of the teeth are uniform, that they're not chipped. The chipped tooth could have an effect like that. Same thing on the main gear. We have a little cotton swab here, get all that old grease off of there. Again, nothing that I'm seeing here says that it's causing the sluggishness, but uh, I will wait and see. Check the teeth of the main gear. This one, I want to get a brush here. I want to brush out those teeth because I'm not seeing clear definition on these. So I'm using a wire brush. You can see I'm pulling it out to the paper towel. That'll clear the channels so that they intersect well with the pinion gear. Check the profile this way. And then check the ridges to make sure you don't have a warped gear. That can always be a case. This one seems to be fine. If you were having an issue with getting the items cleared from your channel, just go ahead and go in with a pick or a safety pin or something and just pull it out that way. All right, let's get this out of the way because we don't want that affecting the uh, reel again. Spin the rotor. Make sure that the rotor spins fine. And there's no indication that the rotor is the cause of the issue. And that would also go for the uh, pinion gear itself. <coughs> if that was off-centered or anything, you, you'd probably see a shake or a rattle in it. Then we'll take the screw out of here. So what I'm seeing is a dry reel. But the dry reel, again, usually doesn't cause a mechanical issue like that. 
trying to figure out what that is. An 11 millimeter. Seems like they changed this thing on whim. And they forced me to go find the, the right tool. If you have questions on this reel or any reel in particular, if you leave those questions in the comment section, I will try to answer those for you. And uh, try to get you unstuck if you happen to be working on a project where you're stuck. All right, we've taken that off. I was just looking. It's in the nut cap. There is a, you can see it in here. I'll get it out of there. It doesn't belong in there anyway. There's a little bushing for that axle shaft, which goes in there that got stuck in the, uh, um, the nut when it came off. All right, you can just rock that up. I've rarely seen anything on a skip that would involve this assembly, but as part of the general service, you do want to come in here and service this assembly. I'm looking for trap line. I'm looking for debris. I'm looking for something out of the ordinary because the parts that we've inspected so far have been okay. There hasn't been an issue with that. And the sticking that I felt when we first started, while it's unusual, uh, it rarely occurs in this assembly here. One of the reasons why is it's sealed. So you have a collar that's uh, a hold down collar here. Put those in place. And now this should pull out. And maybe that's a little telltale. There's all kinds of funky grease and things in here. I don't know why, but it is. I'm wondering if somebody lathered up that uh, anti-reverse, which shouldn't be. All right, let's take this stack apart. First comes a bearing and a collar. Notice when you take this bearing off that there is a bearing shield up top first. Then the bearing comes out from the top side. There's two sides to this. One side is going to be um, less of a diameter than the other side and it's important that when you go to put that back together again that the smaller diameter piece of this goes below. Okay, we can put those back in. Now these are sealed bearings so you really don't need to, to do any oil. Next up then is your anti-reverse clutch. And I like to clean the clutch out so the clutch does not get oiled or greased. It's a friction driven device. I'm seeing an awful lot of stuff in there which said somebody probably put lubrication on it. That could have caused the stickiness. I can't say with certainty, but we'll clean that out. Notice that you have a metal side and a plastic side. The plastic side faces into the reel. Next up then is that anti-reverse collar that the anti-reverse grabs. Again, this needs to be grease free. You need friction to stop that. Grease is not going to do that. And then we have a bearing and we have the bottom shim of the stack. So let's just wipe that bearing off. Again, sealed bearing. I think that's the, the major change between the two and the three is that it, they became sealed bearings. And we're going to do the same thing with the pinning gear that we did with the main gear. We're going to use a, a hard brush. It can be a toothbrush. It can be a wire brush. This happens to be a brass wire brush. Um, just to wipe all that old dirt out of there so that you get uh, the best gear from a meshing perspective. Let's go ahead and restack. I'll take that little washer which goes first. Now I'm going to use Penn's grease. I'm going to use Penn's precision reel grease here. Not because it's a pen reel necessarily, I just use the pen precision reel grease for just about everything. Alright, that goes, and then your first sealed bearing goes. And then your AR collar goes on. Remember what we said, the plastic side goes down over that collar. And now you'll see <coughs> The collar is proud of the, uh, the anti-reverse bearing. That's why you need that little indentation on the second set of bearing and coupler. So that is your stack. Nothing more needs to be done there other than to put the, the 
a more shim washer that goes on the top of that bearing. We're going to clean the case. That's what you should be doing for all of your services. The, the idea of the services here is really it's clean, it's inspection, it's removing the old oils and lubrications, and it's replacing those. And replacing, of course, any parts that may have been needed when you inspected and found out they were bad. And most of the time, that's like drag washers and the like. But every now and then, you're going to find a chip tooth on a gear, or you're going to find a spring that somehow lost its tension or things like that and that's where you want to uh, make sure that you replace them as part of your service. All right the inner case is clean. You can go ahead and take that whole stack now and just load that right in. These are ridges here. You got to find the ridges in the um, case and just as long as it's running flush with the top here you're okay. This is a triangular clamp and I believe they're equidistant, it doesn't matter which way you put it. Some of these you will find have a um, if you find that uh, there's some that have a little hole or something in the side as an alignment then that's where you need to uh, match up to. This one you can turn it upside down and backwards and forwards it's pretty much going to meet from either side. Okay. Three of these go in, and when Penn did these, they put a little bit of Loctite on these. It kind of makes sense. It's cold Loctite, but both vibration and the like will loosen these. If it looses it, then uh, things can get out of square, and if they get out of square, then you're going to have a rough rider. Okay, this part is done. You can go ahead and inspect the inside. There's nothing going on here. We're going to put a little bit of oil onto the Z-bar, which uh, is the trip internal trip lever. We're going to put a little bit onto the seams of both sides of the bale. And we'll put some on the roller. You don't need to pull the bale off for general servicing. The only time you need to, to take that bale off is if you're having a performance issue with the bale. You mentioned that bushing for the axle that goes inside the pinion gear. And then we have the rotor cap. I like these, you can't over tighten them. You have that shield up top. I like to put as much of this as I can on by hand. That way I don't uh, risk stripping it. Then we have our tie down loop. When you tighten this, give it a spin, make sure that it's, spinning. it's even spinning easier than it was before, which is nice. And then go ahead and put that tie down on. screw just searching my parts tray so these pen wheels have uh, got a good reputation generally speaking you can't go wrong with them they are very durable I'm not sure what happened with this one everything that I've seen so far is telling me that uh, we broke something free in there that may have been causing the foul, but I don't see anything of long term. I don't see a broken piece or a part or anything that uh, would cause an issue there. I got a little bit too much grease on there. I'm going to use my, my glove just to kind of wipe it off, keep it off my hands, but get rid of the excess. And we're going to bring this cross wine block into position. That's got a large flathead screw that holds that one down. So we're going to go ahead and get that one started, and we can tighten that up. When you install this crosswind gear, make sure that you install it with the stud at the bottom of the base of this. That would be right here. Once you tighten it down before you go any further, just give it a, a turn to make sure that it's operating smoothly.
when you come to your crosswind gear, or crosswind block rather, make sure that you clean the inside. I'm just checking here. Again, we had something that was a little odd in terms of performance, so I wanted to see, just make sure that there wasn't something at the end of the stroke of this that may have been causing that. And then we can load this with a little bit of grease. And then a little bit of grease into the cavity. Load that over the stud. Make sure you get it underneath the carrier. That would be there. And just take your time. All right, now we can clean off the axle shaft. I'm thinking that there was something in the axle shaft, maybe bad grease or excess grease and the like. Whatever it is, we've taken care of that. I got one, one more piece here. Looks like maybe there's just a little bit more dried grease. And what I said about using the pick to clear those channels. Just checking all the teeth, they seem to be fine. So we'll just continue by greasing this main gear. And uh, mystery, right? It's a mystery. So we will uh, definitely send a note back to the owner with this that uh, we've had it apart, watch the video, you'll see everything uh, that was done to it. And if you have that problem again, send it back. I don't, uh, don't charge for rework, but I hope to avoid the rework by doing it right the first time. All right, we've got a axle shaft we're going to insert through. We know it's not the axle shaft. We've tested that already. Insert it all completely until you get to the small hole aligned with the hole in the axle shaft. And then my favorite thing, we need small screws here. Well, while I'm doing this, if you like the video, uh, please like it. Again, I encourage you to subscribe. If you do subscribe, hit the notification button. That way you'll see all of the videos that I post. I do post uh, frequently, and uh, you'll get a chance to see whether it's a reel you want to learn more about, or if you want to take a pass on it, and I know your time is valuable. And go ahead and pass if it's not something that uh, you think will apply to you. There is a shim on here. We have our case. This goes on next. That should just snap in place. That was a nice snap. Make sure that all of your ridges are nice and tight and that you're not forcing them to be tight. You don't want to have any kind of tension in that case because that translates to poor operation of the wheel. All right. Well, we're going to take that spool apart too. We want to check the drag system. They did convert the, uh, the Fierce and the Pursuit to the HT100 drag system. The pen bottles have always had the uh, that HT100. The Fierce and the Pursuits version 1 and 2 had felt washers. And felt washers are fine. They do run the risk of getting torn under heavy fighting conditions and frequent use of the drag. So if you have a one or a two fierce, go ahead and it's time to do the, the drag changeover. Go ahead and use the HT100s. They are a perfect fit and I think you'll be happy using them versus the felt. For those of you that are using the felt and don't notice any kind of issues whatsoever, leave them. You don't need to spend the money to do the uh, the upgrades if those felt washers are treating you fine. Penn's not the only one. Shimano's used felt washers and, and others. It's not a, a bad practice. It's just uh, a different material, that's all. All right, we should be able to put the pump guard on now. And we want to load in the bottom screw that's going to hold that on. These bump cards are there to keep the case from fracturing. You can break that little piece of plastic if you jam it into a, a gun wall or a pier railing or something like that. 
it's better to break the cheap little piece of plastic than it is to uh, break the bottom of the case of the reel. All right, this thing is running like a champ, like what I would expect the pen bottle to, to run like. So whatever that little hesitation was, as I mentioned, we may have broken free of that, but there's no hesitation here whatsoever at any point. Let's go up to the, to the top drag then. This is a stack. It's held in by a retainer clip. I grab that clip. So my mind is still racing around in terms of what the cause might be. There is a chance that some kind of braid got stuck in the, in the spool and when we did it, it kind of broke away. I don't know. I didn't see a piece of braid come out of here. It is a, a braid lined reel. Whatever it is, I'm going to, from my inspection, I don't believe it's, it's going to exist any longer there. It may have been that it actually snuck in through here. I don't know. It's going to uh, remain a mystery to me. So these are the HT100s, and one of the things you're going to notice about this that's different from some of the other pen reels you may have seen is that there is no keyed washer. The keyed washers are the ones with the points. Normally you would have... Uh, I'm sorry, the eared washer. Normally you would have a keyed washer, which is the rectangular. Then you would have an eared washer, which is a circle with two points. And then you would have the other rectangular washer. That's not here, right? All three of these are keyed washers. Well, where are they getting the hold for the spool? They're getting the hold from the spool by the tabs on the dry washer. I'm going to use Cal's Universal Dry Grease to keep these lubricated. I dip it into the grease, I roll it around, use my glove as a tool, and then I wipe off any excess for the drag washer. The sequence is a drag washer first. Make sure that those points lodge into the grooves inside the spool. Then a metal washer. And we get to do this again. Followed by another metal washer. And then the last of the drag washers, we'll do that one more time. And I didn't wipe the last one off because that's just the amount of coat you need, just a little bit of a sheen. But again, if you had found yourself uh, with too much on there, the, the too much is just going to get squeezed off. It has no effect. So please, just uh, wipe it off, avoid any troubles later. All right, to set this retainer spring then, you just want to find the groove inside the spool on top of those washers. There's a little groove there. Set one side in, bring it around and set the other side in. Just like that. And now your spool drives retainer clip is set. And you know what? I'm going to see if I can't just clip this off here. I don't know. I'm just still thinking maybe something like that got in there. It's hard to say. Hard to say, but mechanically this reel checks out as it should. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and tighten this down right now. I didn't notice any broken parts in the oscillation system. I didn't notice any broken parts in the drag system. And now we got the spool here. I'm going to tighten it down, make sure that the drags are holding. We'll give it a test. I mean that's smooth as it should be. And then I like to back those tension off the drag washers when not in use. That way you don't compress the drag washers. They stay uh, lubricated. You're not squeezing anything out. And at the end of the day, they're going to last longer. Okay, just kind of buff this up. And uh, we'll send it back with a note that says, uh, you know, we completely serviced the reel. Watch the video. It started with the sluggishness, but it's all gone now. And uh, we're not sure why, but it's all gone. Not sure what the cause was. All right. Well, if you've enjoyed that, please like it. And again, please subscribe if you uh, want to see more of these. To all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. And to all, please stay safe, stay well, and have a great day fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.